Hey, what's up out there? I hope you're all fantastic. I'm Anthony. This is the Silver Screen Analysis. And today I have another episode of Vintage 90s for you guys. Today we're stepping back to 1997 to uh, talk about an indie movie with a star-studded cast that is actually quite good but was sort of considered a box office failure. And that would be Copland, written and directed by James Mangold. They bought some land in Jersey, got some cheap loans from people they knew. They made themselves a place where the shit couldn't touch them. This story is set in the small town of Garrison, New Jersey. It's policed by a quiet-mannered sheriff and his two deputies. Not much goes on in this town. Garrison is also the home of many corrupt NYPD officers led by a charming but sadistic lieutenant. Everybody in this town essentially grew up with one another and when these cops try to cover up a crime by one of their own and the sheriff begins investigating, things get deadly. Now, as I said, this was basically an indie movie. It had a modest $15 million budget. The cast consists of a 40 pounds heavier Sylvester Stallone as Garrison's sheriff. Harvey Keitel plays the ruthless lieutenant with Ray Liotta and Robert Patrick and Michael Rapaport, John Spencer and Peter Berg filling out his crew of cops. But it doesn't stop there because you get Robert De Niro playing an internal affairs officer, uh, Annabella Sciorra, Kathy Moriarty, Janine Garofalo, uh, Malik Yoba, Edie Falco, Paul Calderon, Frank Vincent, and Arthur Nassarella fill out a star-studded cast. And I think no matter what the size of their role was in this film, I think everybody delivered a great performance. And that could possibly be why this film didn't really gain a ton of momentum. The cast sort of oversizes the small-scale story. It's uh, possible the expectations for everybody going into this one were a bit elevated to the point that even this layered, dramatically fueled plotline was a bit of a letdown when all was said and done. And I guess I could understand that. I mean, I was like 20 years old when this movie came out, and even I was a bit turned off by a non-action Stallone to the point that I didn't really give this movie a fair shot at the time. It's a bit of an unassuming story for the gusto of the cast, and I mean, it just took me a while to kind of appreciate this movie, but I think seeing this cast and seeing Stallone character in particular come to life and just have an awakening to what's going on around him is a commanding story regardless of its subtleties. To fit everybody into budget, the actors all took scale pay and it's just awesome to see so many familiar famous faces filling out the characters in this moody story. Everybody uh, effectively plays down their personality types. These characters are grounded and broken and uh, watching Leota and De Niro and Stallone disappear into these normal grounded character types I think is intriguing to watch. You came to me, to my town, with all these speeches, and you were talking about doing the right thing, and I'm doing the right thing. What, what's going on? What are you doing? I was like two weeks ago. I think James Mangold's script weaves a story with endless amounts of history to it to create a very uh, strong atmosphere. This uh, is very much a noir film with the vibe of a gritty urban western and it can easily lure you in. The story very much feels lived in and so do the characters. You can uh, just feel they've all spent decades together and that over time just the history and the experiences have created some uh, tightly wound dynamics. This leads to you being able to feel the tension increasing as Stallone maneuvers this dirty town known as Copland. Uh, nobody takes him seriously, but he doesn't veer from his ethics. And seeing Stallone pour himself into these emotional character elements is impressive. Hey, I came to tell you I found Superboy. And I'm bringing him in tomorrow morning. I mean, this sheriff knows he isn't really respected by anybody in this community despite being generally liked and the blend of hesitancy and determination as he uh, forges forward to find out the truth about this town is compelling cinema. It's all very subtle, but Stallone, I think, quietly commands the screen among this talented ensemble, which is actually pretty ironic because Stallone once stated that this movie actually set his career back a great deal despite the fun that he took in taking on this movie and this character, and it wasn't even his role to begin with. Uh, Travolta, Cruz, Hanks, and Gary Sinise were all in talks for this character. I think Gary Sinise would have been a solid choice, but after watching the performance, I think Stallone was the best option. And I would certainly say that if you enjoy slow burning crime dramas that can easily lure you into the bleak settings with multiple characters and moving pieces, then uh, Copland is a film to put on your watch list. These dirty cops kind of maneuver about this small town like they're the mob, and uh, watching Stallone navigate his character 
character through his moral dilemmas is gripping to see. And as I said earlier, the ensemble's fantastic, everybody delivers great performances, Liotta really disappears into this burnt out cop, Keitel shines as a seemingly clean cut cop that's just dirty as a snake, and uh, De Niro, despite limited screen time, I think is a treat, Annabella Sciorra was nicely cast as well, her character has a very strong backdrop with Stallone's character that's sort of the heartbeat to this entire plot, and I think they're fantastic in their scenes together. And I will admit the overall progression of this film is familiar to others in the genre, particularly crime dramas and cop thrillers centering in the Northeast. There are a few subplots that we've seen in other movies before as well, and uh, some of the character tropes here have been done before too. But I don't think that these recycled genre elements hinder this story of dirty cops and a lone sheriff that nobody believes in from just being an effectively dramatic and unassumingly intense journey. I think Stallone was awesome in this role. He really stepped out of the box and he delivered just what Mangold needed and more so than just putting on 40 pounds for the character. The writing doesn't try to do too much, it really keeps the focus on the emotional core of the characters and I think if you're a fan of the genre or you enjoy these movies with very atmospheric plot lines then Copland is worth checking out. It's a compelling story with a thought provoking complexity to it, the world class ensemble is just the cherry on the sundae, the tension elevates nicely and they just don't make these little movies anymore with these huge casts that just deliver an impact that stick with you anymore. Financially, they may not be worth it, but uh, they're always going to be there in old movies like Copland. And I think that wraps up this review of Copland, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Vintage 90s. If you did see Copland, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Also, what are some of your other favorite ensemble movies? I'd like to see what some of your guys' picks are. Thank you for watching, as always, guys. Be on the lookout for the next video coming very soon. And until then, I'll catch you at the movies.